Well, we are less than two hours away from former President Trump's news conference. No word on when we will get one from Vice President Harris. We are counting no word yet, though. She hasn't stopped for a news conference, hasn't sat down for an interview, no freewheeling questions, absent one after the hostage release, and that's since joining the top of the presidential ticket for the Democrats. Here she is dodging reporters, which she's been doing for almost three weeks now. Well, yesterday, her plane shared the tarmac with GOP vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance, who figured he'd do the media's job. They're not demanding press conferences. So what did he do? He rolled up to Kamala's plane to ask why she's been dodging the press for the past 18 days. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to check out my future plane, but I also wanted to go say hello to the vice president and ask her why Kamala Harris refuses why does she refuse to answer questions from the media? And I also thought, and to answer some questions, and so I thought uh, her reporters might actually benefit from that as well. So, had a little bit of fun. Uh, I don't think the vice president waved at me as she drove away, but uh, I'm glad to have done it. And I'm glad to be here in Wisconsin actually trying to persuade people to vote for us as opposed to just giving another scripted speech. So this is brilliant from J.D. Vance. He took questions three times in, in 24 hours. Let that sink in. He did a gaggle. He did two press conferences. He rolled up to the plane, demanded to see Harris, demanded to have her take questions. Mm. But, Kennedy, this is happening because the media is allowing it to. They are not demanding a press conference. No. They are not demanding interviews. In fact, here's a CNN commentator. Here's her hot take on J.D. Vance and what he did yesterday. So many people will be turned off by this. Stalker. Literally, this, the stalking, it's like Donald Trump walking behind Hillary Clinton during the debate. How dare you, right? This is the vice president of the United States. It shows a lack of respect. And again, for women, this is, this is a huge election for women, women's rights, our sense of selves, our sense of uh, not having people control our bodies and not having people uh, control us. And so that, that, that's like stepping into her territory. It's, it's, it's this very, um, uh, the, the, the physicality of it is supposed to send a message. I, I mean, what, what was that? <laughs> I don't know. Is there a Make-A-Wish program in the hiring department at CNN? Uh, what was that woman saying? At, at least uh, word salad seemed to be contagious. But, you know, she's like, how dare you? How dare you not talk to the American people? How dare you not uh, be challenged by journalists? I think the vice president really needs to sit for a hard-hitting interview, considering the very... And I can use the word curious circumstances at which she landed at the top of the ticket. And, and that's a very gracious way of describing her coronation. But she does need to answer for a lot of her past policy positions. It seems like right now she's ducking a debate and she hasn't taken some incoming from the press that's covering her, the, the gaggle that goes with her, and they have to be feeling the frustration. You know, there are commentators like that who joke about J.D. Vance's stunt, but there are people on her plane covering her who would really love to have some answers, and so would their readers and their listeners and the voters, and it's incredibly disrespectful to be ghosting all of them in this manner. You know, Larry, having been with former President Trump, like, yes, people have stump speeches, but that man knows how to ad-lib. Mm. That man knows how to get off a teleprompter. Mm. He knows how to add new things into the teleprompter. Last minute, I used to sit with this teleprompter guy who would literally take things out, add things in. It was like a real-time editing process. For Kamala Harris, though, here's one thing I've noticed. I was sitting on my couch reciting her speech, <laughs> and I've only seen it four times. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> only four. Only four. Before I was elected vice president, before I was elected as a United States Senator, I was elected Attorney General, and before that, elected District Attorney, and before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. So hear me, Detroit, when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. I know Donald Trump's type. I mean, hear me when I say, get some new lines. Mm. Yeah, I know. It was sort of a semi-word <laughs> semi salad. By the way, I once taught the teleprompter operator how to work the teleprompter in the White House because he couldn't coordinate with Trump. <laughs> wow. And Trump learned that very well. Can I just say... The star of that show, or the star of this segment, is J.D. Vance, who is really starting to hit 
his stride right now. I had him on our show for a quick phone interview. I watch him out there. His messaging is coming terrific. He's talking about economic growth and tax cuts and deregulation, all the things that uh, Kamala Harris doesn't want to talk about. By the way, I have not heard the term Bidenomics lately. I don't think hmm. that's in her teleprompter. I'm on a Bidenomics hunt. I can't find it. It could be Kamalanomics, but she has a lot to answer for and she doesn't want to answer for it. You've got the wave of inflation, which is so damaging to middle America, and lately you've got a wave of unemployment, which is so damaging to middle America. She has to be held yeah. accountable to that. Sooner or later, she's going to be held accountable to that, and that's when Mr. Trump will strike, and you may hear some of that today at his, at his presser. So Playbook pointed out that Kamala Harris has entertained, Harris, a sit-down interview with Tim Walz, and they thought about doing this. Then they decided there's not an upshot to it. And then they decided this, Whoa. that a longtime Harris ally suggested Harris could hold off on big interviews until after Labor Day. Ooh. There's really no need, the person said. The voters that she needs are at the local level. They're not reading the national press. Here's the line that stood out to me. What is the incentive for her to take more questions, said a person close to the campaign? She's getting out exactly the message When did that come out? This morning. This morning. Okay, so what else is going on today? Uh, official statements from the Harris Walls campaign about his military service and all of the controversy that's around uh, uh, of him right now, mainly coming from criticism from military vets in Minnesota, by the way, his home state. Yeah, they can't sit down now. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard you say, because I watch you, you called what we're in right now an affordability crisis. Yes. Okay? Yes. And she can't talk about that either because she hasn't owned what got us here. Mm. And the word inflation starts to get rather nebulous now. Let's just call it what it is. An affordability crisis, what Larry Kudlow called it, and also a point where the American dream is slipping away. Mm. She's not gonna have that raw conversation with us. And I don't think that more liberal leaning Tim Walz can have it either with lockdown, you know, lines where you turn in your neighbors if they're, you know, call in if you see a neighbor not kids, wearing a mask. Kids can't afford homes. Kids cannot afford That's a home. heartbreaking situation. Kids also can't afford a mortgage if you can get a mortgage on a home. Home high prices interest. are too high. It's part of the inflation problem. Look, paychecks have been shrinking during Bidenomics or Kamalanomics or whatever. Paychecks oh. for ordinary middle class people have been shrinking. But and I got to say, the reason Trump holds a big lead on the economy and on inflation is because during the Trump years, paychecks exploded. They yeah. got pay raises. Under Biden and Kamala, they got pay cuts. All true. This is so important. All true, but we don't get to talk policy until you know, the top of the ticket inserts themselves. And we've got a 2 p.m. Eastern time press conference from Donald Trump. The all-consuming goal of Trump needs to be to talk about the economy yeah. and to force Kamala off the teleprompter, mm. force her off, challenge her to a debate. And I've read reporting he's going to do that and maybe multiple debates. Get Do it today. Today. I want an economy debate. A De single debate issue. right now, you're yeah. saying. Debate, a right, debate now. right now. Before Make it an September economy 4th. debate. Correct. Emily Campagno. Exactly. Before the DNC. Look, the, the reason why she hasn't held a proper news conference or feels that she has to debate or answer Americans' questions is because she doesn't need to, she feels. And that is the biggest hallmark of all. As she cited earlier, you elected me X, Y, Z. Note that she is citing what she, the position she held, not her accomplishments that she did while she was in office. It is all about checking boxes, omitting the box that got her to that first one, as you pointed out, but not anything that she's mm. actually done. There is no experience being cited, and that's why she fails. The notion, too, that this media is both protecting her, which is the verb that's been put in black and white, by this silence and also failing to ask the questions is laughable. We have these pundits saying that what she's not allowed to, or he's not allowed to go on the tarmac. She owns the tarmac now. It's a physical <laughs> emblem. At That's the end weird. of the day, she has only demanded respect. She has not earned it. And that is why she will fail. We need to understand these policies. But at the end of the day, look, all of these people at her rallies, at her rallies they were voting for Biden too. So what we need to do, what Donald Trump needs to do in the GOP is harness all of those hardworking men in America who are either undecided or who were independent Mm -hmm. who see that under this administration, the economy, the foreign policy, all of those important big ticket items, they trust Trump, you know, three digits higher plus. Yep. 2 p.m. Eastern time, President Donald Trump will take questions. Kamala Harris won't. He will. He did it last week, too.
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.